Welcome to Speed ATing. Everybody, hopefully you can hear me now. Got some fun tech issues. This is going exactly the way I thought it might go, which is awesome. Uh, we are learning this as we go. Hopefully you can hear me now. Uh, I am broadcasting to all of the rooms. So regardless of which room you're in, you should be hearing this right now. Uh, we'll get started in just a minute or two. Uh, we'll start for 1210 with our first breakout. As you navigate around, please feel free to move about between the rooms. Uh, as we go, we'll do five minute presentations. We will send updates in the chat. So you'll see an update come through the chat that will say ATAC NJ, and that will tell you when uh, the session's about to end and then when the next session's about to start. In between, feel free to navigate around, pick a different room, chat with people, move up to kind of um, use your keyboard to just kind of move up to somebody and just have a conversation. Uh, I think while you are not having those conversations, take a second to mute your microphone. That way it kind of keeps the background noise down in each of the spaces. Uh, and then each of our presenters, thank you to all of them. We're excited to try this. Uh, thank you to all of you for uh, offering up your time to kind of explore how we could use this going forward. We do think this will be a really great way to share information and you are all trailblazing right now uh, because we honestly have no idea whether this is gonna work or not. Uh, and I, I think just the fact that we've all at least gotten in counts as a win for me. So even if it falls apart right now, this is a win, we've had a victory. Uh, so I hope that you enjoy all of your conversations in the rooms. Uh, one quick thing to the presenters, before we get rolling, just make sure that your broadcast is set for just your room uh, so that we don't have uh, our broadcasts when we share screens bleeding over each other. Uh, what we'll do is we'll do five minute presentation times with five minute breaks. We'll do two of those. Then we'll stop for a 10 minute networking break where you're pretty much free to move about wherever you want and chat with whoever you want. And then we'll come back and we'll do two more five minute times with five minute breaks in between. Um, we'll do a full wrap up at about 1250. We'll try to do a SmackDown. I feel like that's an incredibly bold thing that we're gonna try. I don't know how that's gonna work, but we'll figure it out. Uh, if nothing else, perhaps we'll, we'll share resources in the chat and then uh, I can broadcast them out to the whole group. And then we'll think about how we can do this next time going forward to uh, change the format a little bit. So really exciting stuff. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing so that you can go into your session rooms that are going to start at 10 after the hour, which is in one minute. All right, so have a great time and uh, we'll check back in in a little bit. So yeah. Actively learn Karen Yanofsky. So today what we're going to talk about is this amazing program called Actively Learn. Right now, what do, well, let me tell you what it's about. Think about when you're teaching scaffolding, or teaching reading comprehension to your students. What is the typical way that we help improve the quality of our students' re reading comprehension skills? I don't know if, what it looks like for you, but we typically have students read short passages, and at the end, we ask them to find the evidence back in the text and answer the questions. But that can be problematic for some students who have working memory issues, processing speed issues, fluency issues. Maybe the, the article you've given them is static and they can't modify the way the visual presentation. So it makes it very difficult for them to read. Well, this tool, Actively Learn, is an amazing tool that um, allows us to provide scaffolded supports that can reach all learners. It re acknowledges learner variability. It's very inclusive. It's multi-sensory. It um, is universally designed. And what it, what it offers you is a number, thousands of articles that they have already adapted and made ready for you to use. So here is, here's the main page. Once you've created an account, you can see I'm logged in. Here's the home page. You can choose articles by grade level, by Lexile level, by standard. You can choose by curriculum units. Let me just show you what that looks like. Yep, a little bit of a lag. Okay, genres, themes. 
you can, so they add new articles all the time. Like for example, here's a new one because the CDC just said now this week said three feet apart is fine. So we can, but we can go into high interest articles, middle school. I mean, they have all different um, grade level. And so we can just choose this particular one living through the pandemic. What I want to do is show you the magic behind Actively Learn. So I'm going to open up this article. And is it opening? Well, it's, I still see a gray screen. Okay. Did it open up for you? Do you see it? Okay. Yeah, it's there. All right. So what, what, what you can see is... Just to start off with, it's got a blue background and really kind of large text. So I want you to see how um, we can adjust the visual presentation of the article with text settings. So they have it, you can make the mar margins and spacing very, um, very wide, very large text size. You can change the color background. And just those kinds of changes can make it easier for your student to then better read the article, better understand it. Now they have a pre-reading question. As you read, think about the question, why did the CDC update its guidelines for schools? They also have a poll question at the beginning. And then here's the article itself. And they have some, some suggestions on the side here, like actually here it explains what the CDC is. So there's some vocabulary terms over here. And then as you're reading, you can embed questions for the students to then stop and think about and show that they're understanding the content instead of having to hold on to all the information. So you can add, um, check, um, choose multiple choice, you can add short answer, but instead of having to read the entire article, now you're embedding questions throughout the article. So here's another one. Now, if you want to customize this, let's say you don't like the questions that they asked. You can change them and add your own. You can bring in your own articles. You don't have to use their articles. So here, if I want to customize this particular article, maybe I want them want to ask a question right here because I feel like they've read enough. So if I highlight the text, now I get an option to insert a note, insert a question, insert a link. The other thing too, that the other part of it is for some students, maybe it's too much text. We can white out sections of them and then students won't even realize that they are getting different versions of the same text. How powerful is that? So we have lots of ability to customize it. We can assign it. So if I hit assign, any of the um, any of the the classes that I've set up, I can assign it to them. Or I'm going to go back to my home page here, and they I can create a new over here with the plus sign. I can create a new class right here with the plus sign, and it syncs with Google Classroom. So I hope I've whetted your appetite a little bit and got you excited to, to explore it further. So here it is. Now I can import courses from my Google Classroom. I can add a class and I'm all set, ready to go. I've added some um, links to, to the collaborative wakelet so that you can better understand how to use this particular tool. So if any questions, any thoughts, any ideas? What do you think? I think it's great. I, I could see so many uses for this with my students and the teachers and especially just the differentiation and the ability to customize it. Absolutely, Leslie. You, you absolutely get it. I remember once I um, was working with a third grade teacher and she, she had four students who were reading well below grade level and she would have to read the content and really spoon feed them and try She set up... Um, actively learn for these students and they were so excited because they could read the content themselves using the text-to-speech and they could answer the questions right away and they felt so independent and successful it was phenomenal i'll never forget that 
how does this work? Because like we use iPads in the district. Like if we went through Safari, this this is really just web based, right? So it wouldn't it would probably right. Work. It's just an online tool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I, I know. Yeah. Get excited. Check out the resources on the Wakelet. <laughs> They have some great blog articles. You'll love those. Really awesome. All right. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Pat. Thanks for helping out. Now I just have to turn off my, you know what I think the lagging is due to because we're at screencastifying it. And now I'm trying to turn off. The accounts are free in, in Actively Learn, right? Like I'm looking at the website right there's now. Free, there's awesome free sections to it. Right now, educators have it for free through the end of the school year, through June 30th. You have all the premium features. You okay. do not need the premium features to, to, to get the value of this particular product. I was but, just going to ask that. You feel like the free version is... is Enough. The free version is tremendous. The premium version is even better. And explore it because you've got all the premium versions through June 30th. Google Keep Mike Murata. Yeah. Hi, okay. Mike. Hi. Hey, Mike. How's it going, everybody? Hopefully you didn't come in here the first time because my whole computer stopped working. Now it seems to actually be working. So this is kind of fun. Um. Well, we only have five minutes, and I guess we should start now. So we're going to talk about Keep. We can do a couple things. And, and if you take a second, and maybe if we all mute our microphones until we're ready to chat, and then we could do it that way so that we don't hear a lot. I'm just curious um, how we would like to proceed. I can give you like a three-minute or two-minute snapshot of Google Keep and why it's so great. Uh, and then we can share out and maybe people have some things they would like to share about Keep. And at the same time, I see my little head was moving. It throws me off when it just randomly moves for no reason. Uh, that always throws me off. So hopefully uh, you guys can still hear. I'm gonna share my screen uh, and show you some Google Keep. Okay, let's do that and see if that works. So hopefully you guys will be able to see my screen. There you go. And basically, when I tried to think about what would I share in Google Keep, I, I thought I would talk for at least an hour on Google Keep. So instead, I, I thought in five minutes, I would hit on some of the big features and then see if anybody else had some. Uh, Google Keep, a note-taking tool that allows you to keep yourself on track with different things synced notes that work everywhere. So right now you're seeing my desktop version of Google Keep. Um, so you see there are notes there, they are color coded. I have the ability to add check boxes in there. I can put pictures in there. Uh, just like we can with any other Google tool, we can add collaborators. If you'll notice on the green note at the right hand side there, uh, there is a small little picture of a user there. So I am sharing that note with myself and my other Google account. So now I can share notes across and people can work on them simultaneously, just like we would on any other um, Google tool. It's actually really cool. So that idea of sorting, organization, collaboration, um, whether that sorting is with colors or if you look along the left-hand side, um, you can add labels to any note. And with those labels, I can easily sort and search for things I might need. So if I'm looking for notes that I've written about history, I can click on those and suddenly only history notes pop up. So it's sorted everything out and only given me the note that I was looking for, which was history. If I go back to all my notes, you'll see the entire setup there, including the notes that I have pinned along the top. Um, a couple other things that are really cool. Um, when I think about the AT features of Google Keep, there is the ability to do OCR. So I can take a picture of any piece of material. So any print material, that I can take a picture of. I can take a picture in Keep 
And then when the note shows up, if I click the three dots in here, one of my options in the note is grab image text. And as soon as you do that, all of the text from the picture comes out in the note itself. So if you're using this as a research tool or to be able to help a student move from a reading activity to a writing activity, you can do it that way and pull the notes out. Uh, you can also do speech to text into a note and not just speech to text, but actually you get speech to text with the audio. Here's the audio piece. Hopefully. So I can speak into my phone and then when the note shows up in my Google Keep, not only is the audio there, but I also have the text. It does the transcription for you. So as you see, the audio shows up as an audio clip that I can download and do anything I want with. But more importantly, that audio gets transcribed into the note. Um, you see, it did make a mistake, so I can go in and fix it. Um, and now I have that chunk of information. And so what I have is the ability for a student um, to use that um, as a note-taking tool for themselves and a way to think about how um, they could perform writing tasks using that tool by just simply leaving notes for themselves. So a lot of different ways that we can use it. And just like that, it was five minutes. Uh, hopefully that helped uh, and you were able to get something from that. Uh, we are right now in a 10 minute break. So you feel free to move about the rooms and chat with other people. And then we'll start back up with another five minute session at 1235. Um, so hopefully this is working for you. I'd love to hear from you um, things that you think we could use this kind of tool for uh, and other ways that we could explore um, providing training in this format. It is an interesting tool. So hopefully you enjoyed and go out and explore or chat with Google Accessibility Kelly Sutting. Hi, so this is going to be a super fast five minutes. And so within this five minutes, I thought I would pull out three Google Doc accessibility settings that you should know about if you've not explored these yet. Um, again, there are tons of other things, but I've only picked out three just for time purposes. So this is me, I'm Kelly Suiting. I'm one of the patent specialists here in Indiana. We're the nonprofit education agency accountable to the Department of Education and Department Administration. And so we are um, grant funded. So everything that we do is at no cost. So we provide services for all K through 12 public schools. That QR code there at the bottom will take you to my information if in fact that you would like to contact me at any time. So in my title, I have accessibility. So what does it mean to be accessible? So within this five minutes, I'm going to focus on accessibility when it comes to text. So this is what I mean. So not all PDFs are accessible. So one good way to test if you have something on your device and to see if a screen reader or a text reader will work, you will take your cursor and highlight over text. You, you see my name here is highlighted in blue. If the text does not highlight, that means that a text reader or a screen reader will not read that text because my device doesn't really know what's on this particular document. But built in within Google Docs is optical character recognition or OCR, and it will scan uh, the documents that you drop into your Google Drive and pull out the text. So then now my students can be more independent in accessing that text if in fact um, their comprehension level is at grade level. So it doesn't um, necessarily mean that the student has their independent reading level has to be at that comprehension level. So they can still access that text independently while they can comprehend um, that text. So this is what I mean. So I've got a document that I've uploaded into my Google Drive and it looks like this. So right now my computer has no idea what is on this document. So one way to pull out the text is you're going to right click, you're going to open with, and then you're going to select Google Docs. So now it's doing that scanning, it's pulling, it's doing the OCR and it's going to pull out if there's text on here or what is on this page so that can be um, I can use um, text to speech or my screen reader. So you can see the original image here is pulled up at the top and down at the bottom I have all of this editable text now and I am just going to turn on my read right for Google extension and turn it on. Maybe I'm gonna move to a different tab that already has it turned on and so then I'm gonna click and I'm gonna click play. 
Reading comprehension worksheet. Read the passage. Then choose the best. So just like that, I've created this inaccessible document into accessible text for text to speech. So now, uh, built in within Google Docs, I want to show you the voice dictation. So voice typing. This is a great tool for students to use who have all of these wonderful thoughts in their heads and it's really difficult for them to get on paper. So having the ability to be able to use their speech for writing can be a big game changer. So underneath tools, I'm going to click voice typing. This little box shows up that I can move anywhere that makes sense to me as the person who's writing with my voice. I'm going to click to speak. Hi, now I can write whatever I want. And if I cannot spell the word phenomenal, it spells it for me. And then I stop typing. And you can see this text all came up. So now I fluidly was able to say a sentence with no problem. And um, it's, this is a skill that definitely needs to be taught. So up front, always show your students how to use speech to text. And eventually they can start putting in the punctuation um, the periods, the spaces, the paragraphs, whenever they need, once they get more proficient using text-to-speech. The last part of Google Docs, and again, there's so much more I wanted to show you, is underneath the tools, so we can support all of our students and families, even if uh, English is not their first language, and we're going to go to Translate Document. So what I just did with this OCR, I can choose um, a different language, let's just say I pick Bulgarian, and I translate it, and it opens up into a new tab, and then it translates that document into that selected language that I had. And I like this because it does keep the original image um, if in fact there were pictures on this page. And then down here is that text that has been translated. Is the translation perfect? No. Is it getting better? Absolutely. And it's definitely a tool to use um, to try to support our families. So those are the three things, um, the voice typing or AKA dictation, our translation, our OCR, the three things that I wanted to do just within these five minutes, but there's so much more and you're happy. I'm happy to have you reach out to me anytime so I can support you on diving deeper into accessibilities of Google Chrome. This is my contact information. If you want the handout that I just was working on, you can go to that little QR code with the dinosaur in the middle of it and hold up your device and I'll take you to this handout and also that tiny URL. So thank you so much for the super quick five minutes. Creating engaging activities, Sarah Gregory. 12.45, so we're going to get started. So we're going to look at Google Slides and just some different simple ways to um, create activities to um, encourage language from our students. So here is the link. Um, there's a bit.ly link to these um, slides if you want to check them out after this session. I'll put it in the chat. And the first thing we're going to look at is just the really simple um, thing of inserting pictures and videos. So you can go to insert and you can grab pictures from your Google Drive. Or what I like to do a lot is search the web. So it's kind of easier than going out of slides and doing a Google image search. If you type in transparent at the after the end, you can usually find an image that has a transparent background and drag that right into your slide deck. You can also insert videos, which I really like to do because again, you could insert videos from your Google Drive, but you can also search YouTube and then um, your YouTube video. So here I clicked on YouTube. I just typed in this video if animals were round and I'll click on that and it inserts it into my slides, which I like because then all my activities kind of live within one spot. They're all in my Google Slides. And also um, there's not that like distracting stuff on the side that you get in YouTube. So now, like I said, you can search images and remove the background, but the image search within slides doesn't always pull up like characters and things like that. So if you wanna make something with a character, like here, um, say we wanna do Raya and the Last Dragon. So this is an image of my daughter where I removed the background using this website, Remove BG. And now I wanna get the character of Raya and the Last Dragon. So I just copy it and go here to my website, again, Remove BG, and I paste it and it'll take away the background. So then it looks a little bit cleaner when you wanna layer images on top of each other. Um, here, I'm just going to copy this one because it's already done. And again, just control V into your um, slide. So you don't have to be like downloading this, saving it into your drive or anything like that. 
Now, if we wanna make a picture scene and have a background, I like to actually insert the picture as a background. So you can see on your toolbar, it says change background. We'll choose an image. So I just did a Google image search of the desert. And then if I want to be interacting with this and moving images around, like hiding people, um, if I accidentally click on the background, it won't move. So it's nice when you set it like that. Now, again, because I want this to be interactive and moving things around, there's a Chrome extension that's called Full Screen Interactive Google Slides so that I can't put my slides in present and still edit them. So, but when I'm editing them, I have all this like distracting stuff on the side. So this Chrome extension will put your slides into present, but you're still able to drag your images and we could still be typing in our story. So it's kind of a cleaner view for our students and, um, and we can still be editing. I'm having trouble like, actually turning it off though. Um, so the next extension we'll look at is Giphy. GIFs are another thing that I really like to use with my students. Um, and so you can search characters. This was an example where we're talking about emotions. So I can just drag a GIF in using this free extension. And then I have screenshots of my AAC icons. Now my the Giphy extension is not working for some reason right now. It has something to do with that other extension, I think. But anyways, you just would click on it, search. I searched happy, I think. And then you can, again, just drag and drop the GIF into the slides. Oh, there it is working now. Um, so again, you don't have to be saving it into your Google Drive, which is really nice. Um, you just would drag it right in like that. And then we can um, be using the AAC icons as kind of a prompt for how we um, what we want to say about the GIF. And there's like the the text, you can just go ahead and delete that on the top. But my computer's being slow. So the other way I support AAC within Google Slides is I'll just take a screenshot of my the home screen of my student's device, and then I'll add um, an icon highlighter in Google Slides that I can move around. So like if I want to highlight, okay, we're talking about feelings, tell me how they feel. Or if I want to say, all right, we're first start it off with a pronoun. So let's highlight all the pronouns. And the way I get this icon highlighter is you just insert a shape. And then the trick is you just have to make it transparent. So I'm going to draw my shape in here. And then at, on your toolbar up here, there's a paint can. And the top just says transparent. Oh, it, this one already did go transparent. Normally when you put it in, it's like gray. Um, and then you can change uh, the color here. And you can also change the thickness of the border. So we can make it like even bigger if we wanted to. And then you can drag that around to highlight some words for your student and click back to your activity after you give that prompt. So I think, I think that's it. <laughs> Our five minutes are up. Whiteboard.chat Elisa Wern. So this is whiteboard.chat. And you you can move this screen around or make it full screen. There's a little full screen button on the bottom right of my shared screen. Um, and this will allow you to make it full screen for you. It doesn't affect anybody else's size. Mm -hmm. But basically, this is a breakdown of what whiteboard chat looks like. So there's a tool section on the on this left hand side over here. There's page navigation down here. And this on the bottom right is your own pen, pen selection. So you have the ability to change what um, color you want yours to be um, when you're in your whiteboard space. Um, essentially what whiteboard.chat does is it gives you a ton of tools. Um, there's a incredible lag going on and I'm not sure. There we go. Um, there's a, there's a lag on the, the screen sharing for some reason, but as soon as it loads, I will tell you, so screen two basically gives you access to all the tools and shows you, you as an instructor, and I'm still waiting for it to appear, but you as an instructor can decide what, um, of the tools you want to have show or hide 
which I think is a really nice feature. You know, that way you could take away everything because as you see this come on, I don't know why there's such a lag, but as you see it come on, you'll see that there's a ton of different tools. You can move and resize things. You can animate things. You can um, set up a cloner, just kind of like Smartboard used to have that infinite cloner. You can set that up for items and they all come out of these kind of sections down here. So you can add webcam video right live. You can go in and change or adjust tools you can go and make specific shapes, lines, arrows, add a video, which we'll see in a minute, upload PDFs or photos. And when you upload a PDF that has multiple pages, it puts in every page, gets its own page in whiteboard chat, which is kind of nice. So if you have a four page document, you don't have to resize things. It just drops one page on one page of whiteboard chat, etc. Um, you can go in and type, you could, you know, uh, there's an eraser if you need to go in and fix mistakes. Um, and there's, again, all of the, the tools that you need to be able to add content and move it around um, are all on the pages. Let me see if I can, and I just moved that box around without even really wanting to. Um, there are a bunch of other tools that you can utilize. Um, that give you the ability to draw on the pages, add boxes. Um, they just added a currency counter so you can drop in like dollar bills and coins and it automatically does the calculation for you as you're going, which I think is a, is a nice feature to be able to, to show things. Um, let me see how long it takes to move to page three. And again, this is in collaboration mode where everyone has equal access. In student teacher mode, in teaching mode, it basically gives you the ability to control what they can move, what they can't, what they could clone, what they can't. So you can set it up so they can only add text on top of the document that you've created. Um, and I think that that is kind of a nice feature. Um, you can also see everybody's work at once. So if I had multiple people in there, I could click this grid view and it would show me everybody's screens as at once. So you would be able to see all your students doing their work at the same time, um, which is kind of a nice feature. Uh, again, it's taking forever for it to show up. There we go. Um, and so then there's also built-in features like a calculator, um, you know, there's the ability to, I can embed a YouTube video and it shows up differently on the participants and you can embed hyperlinks. So you can just have the participants click here and it would take them to whiteboard.chat, the website. You can add in lines and shapes and a whole bunch of other little uh, creatures. You can add in a student signal, so you can put in a stoplight for them to give you feedback very quickly. Um, and again, you have access to this, that link that's in the chat, so you can go back and play with it and do anything that you want in terms of playing with the dice and the, ca the calculator. There are tons of tools and they keep adding them on a, on a very quick basis. Um, and I believe that's my full five minutes, but I will keep talking until I can't. Flipgrid shorts Hillary Goldthwaite Fells. Hey everyone, I am here to show you Flipgrid shorts. My name is Hillary Goldthwaite Fells, and I'm an assistive technology specialist in the great state of Maine. And I'm also a special education consultant and assistive technology consultant, also working on AEM and UDL tools. Today, I'm gonna to show you Flipgrid Shorts and it's super cool. And so I'm gonna just start broadcasting my tab. I love Fumo Space. And here are my shorts. <clears throat> Here's the great part about Flipgrid Shorts. They're right in Flipgrid and you just navigate to Shorts. To record a short is literally as simple as recording a short and you have numerous options available to you. Let me show you a really great example of a tutorial that I've been doing for schools. 
One of them are little inclusive tech tips for the week that we send out to our community newsletter that goes out to our whole entire district community, whether you are a staff member or a parent or student. So um, the department had asked me to make these and they're great. So I've been using Flipgrid shorts. So let me just show you an example of one that we made. Hey everyone, this is a quick tutorial to show you how you can make your mouse cursor or change the color of your mouse. I am just looking at the tray at the right corner of my device. And when I click on it, I have some features that I can enable or look at. I'm gonna go to my gear, which is our settings. And I can do, get to the setting in a couple of ways. I can type in I can type in large cursor or mouse cursor or look for accessibility features, or I can go to advanced and go to accessibility. But for now, I'm just going to go to large cursor and I'm gonna look for that large mouse cursor and turn that on. I can change the size. Mine is set to very large. This is the default size. So I can make it big or small, and I can also change the color. I can make it black, red, magenta, green, whichever one works for you. You can also highlight the cursor when it's moving, which is what I've done here. Notice when I toggle that off, that red circle goes away. So you can also have that so if you're struggling with actual looking for accuracy, you can use that as well. This is the long and short of how you make your mouse cursor bigger and change the color. So here's the cool part about using Flipgrid shorts. Many, many features. So I have different sharing options. And when I click on them, I can either copy and paste the link I can use a QR code. I can download the video, post it to Google Classroom, embed it, share it to a Microsoft team if you're a Microsoft school, remind or post it to Twitter. For our purposes in our district, we just copy the link and post that in our newsletter. And that works really, really well for us. The other great part that I love is the accessibility features, including the ability to have automatic captions that are editable. So I can take these captions and take the time to edit them just by clicking on it and then clicking in the box and changing them. I can split them, I can combine them so that they're readable. And I also have the option to download them, the captions or reset them as well. If I wanna edit the title, I can do that as well. There are so many wonderful uses for shorts. I love to use them for asynchronous lessons for technology tutorials or even personalized technology tutorials when I get an email request from a staff member or a student that they're stuck on a problem or they're not sure where to go, I'll just open up Flipgrid, pull out a short and, and record that right here. And they're all housed here. And this is actually one of them that I did for a, a teacher who kept getting hung up on presenting and navigating between tabs in a Google Meet. And that seemed to help stop that problem for them as well. And there you have it. That is it. That is the long and the short of Flipgrid shorts. I hope that you enjoy using them and that you have as much fun using them as I have. Take care and have a wonderful day. Special thanks to the Trailblazers. Hillary Goldthwaite Fells at Hillary underscore ADP. Sarah Gregory at Sarah Gregory SLP. Karen Yanofsky, Independent at Consultant, at Karen Jan. Mike Murata, ATAC Director, at Matt P. Beth Poss, Director of Educational Programs, at Poss Beth. Kelly Sudding, at Specialist, Patents, at Case Uding. Elisa Wern, OTN at Specialist, at Wern Dad.